Hi Harvest family, man do we miss you. My wife and I are excited to be able to get to back together with, with you all and worship with you corporately soon. Um, we definitely miss the fellowship, we miss being encouraged by you all and um, it is our desire to be with you. Um, we wanted to give you a quick update on uh, that we had our baby girl Stella Rose Nichols on April 28th. We spent about a week in the NICU and uh, Stella is now home with us and uh, mama and baby are doing well. Uh, Stella's eating Eating great and sleeping well, and we're getting adjusted to having a new newborn back in the house, changing diapers, being up at all hours of the night. And um, man, we're truly grateful for you, uh, for all of your encouragement and prayers through this season that we've gone through. And uh, man, we couldn't be more blessed with our church family um, and your all of your support through all of this. Um, this morning, I just wanted to share briefly with you a devotional and some thoughts that I've been thinking through over the last uh, couple weeks. And, you know, we live in uncertain times right now. We look, we're in unprecedented times where um, basically the whole world came to a standstill because of this coronavirus. And oftentimes um, in these seasons, we when you look at the news, when you look at all of the experts, you see how... Um, Experts that are supposed to be experts in their field are disagreeing with other experts in their field. You look at um, the the World Health Organization and they disagree with how we're, uh, America is handling uh, the, the pandemic. And you have all of these things going on and you have all of the news agencies saying one thing and another agency saying another. And then you turn to social media and you have all of these um People backbiting, people tearing each other down and thinking that they, how they view things is, is exactly how it sh it's going down. And it can leave all of us confused. It can leave us angry. It can leave us frustrated. Oftentimes we, when we don't see, uh, the elevated levels of the pandemic here in Indiana, we can think, well, why are we locked down? And I just want to encourage you this morning that the Lord is always at work. And, um, I'm reminded of a passage in John's Gospel, chapter 3, where um, there were a lot of crazy things going on at the time where, where Jesus had just come on the scene with his ministry, and he was doing incredible miracles, and he was um, preaching the Word of God with power and authority like, like the religious leaders hadn't seen. And he was doing incredible things that no one had ever seen before, and the religious leaders were, were uh, they were... Um, wondering what is going on here. They were wondering what, what is taking place. And, but they were doing all of the religious things, but yet they didn't understand what God was doing. And Jesus has this interesting dialogue with Nicodemus in chapter three. And Nicodemus comes to him at night. He's, he's, he's interested in finding out more about who this Jesus character is who this man is, that we hear these miracles, we hear these teachings. And he says, we know that you are a man sent by God. And Jesus answers him and, and he says, you know, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Unless a man is born again, he can't see uh, it with spiritual eyes what God is doing and how God is at work. And um, that is, I think in today's day and age, there's no way that you and I are going to be able to understand how God is using all of these things to bring about his plans and purposes if we're seeing with eyes of the flesh. And oftentimes it takes years of learning to walk with God, it takes years of being in the word and being in prayer and, and having a tune in your heart learning how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and learning how to be sensitive to his leading and his prodding and his prompting in your life to be able to see things accurately. Oftentimes when we see things, we react in the flesh and it's, and it's not a godly thing. And so I'm, I'm, as I, as I look at this, as I look at the, the landscape of where our country and our nation is at, I see a lot of people responding and acting in the flesh. I don't see people responding with spiritual eyes to be able to see the kingdom. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that if you are drawing near to the Lord, that you are being in prayer and you're asking God, give me eyes to see how you are moving, how you're, how you how you are building your kingdom in these times. And how can I be a part of doing that, that God would begin to show you. And I'm reminded in, in 1 Samuel of, of, of a little shepherd boy. You know, this was before David, King David came into prominence. This was well before David was even anointed by Samuel to be king. David was being faithful to what 
he was asked by his father. He came from a very poor family. And because of that, his family didn't, they didn't have servants to take care of the sheep. And so David was the least in his family. He was the youngest of eight brothers. And so he was found being, uh, watching over the sheep and, um, something that was given to the least in the family to do. But during those years of being in, um, in, in a place of obscurity, the Lord was doing a work in David's heart. He was teaching David how to walk with him. He was teaching David about who this God was, about who God was, about his nature, about his character, teaching David how he can trust him. And as David began to just cry out to God and play his, his heart before the Lord and began to worship God, God began to reveal who he was to him. And um, one day, um, David was called by his father to go to the front lines to be able to see how his brothers were doing. The nation of Israel had battle formations. Um, the nation of Israel was on one side and the, their army of the Philistines were on the other side. And as David approached the camp, he saw a tremendous fear in the eyes of the nation of Israel. And as he got closer, he was wondering, man, this seems doom and gloom around here. He doesn't see the king. He doesn't see King Saul. King Saul's back in the tent, shaking in his boots, wondering what he's going to do. He doesn't even know what to do. And on the opposite side of the field, you see this giant Philistine, Goliath. And he's taunting the army of the living God. And he's challenging them to come out and to fight him. And you see the nation of Israel just, they're, they're, um, they're in battle formation, yet they're scared to death. And their eyes were not seeing with eyes of faith. They didn't have eyes to see how God was at work. They didn't have eyes to see the kingdom because they were in such fear. They were looking at things with natural eyes. Then you have this little shepherd boy who comes into the camp and he hears the taunts of the arm of the Philistine. And what does David do? David begins to ask, who is this Philistine that is taunting the armies of the, of the nation of Israel, the armies of the living God? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is coming against us? And, um, and he says, um, now no one in the army of, of the nation of Israel will go out and defy him. And David looks at him and says, I'll go out and I'll challenge him because I know who my God is. And David, we know the story well, David takes five smooth stones and he takes his sling and he runs out to face that giant. And he takes his, his sling and he swings it around, he swings it around, he swings it around, and then finally he lets go. And that rock sailed through the air, hit that Philistine in the forehead, and that giant fell with a thunderous crash. Now I can imagine that on the nation of Israel, as David was running out, you could probably hear a pin drop wondering what is going to happen. You could hear the taunts of this giant uh, um, Philistine and you could hear the nation of Israel just wondering what's going to happen. Obviously, they thought that their, their lives were in danger because they're entrusting um, the nation to a young shepherd boy who wasn't even a soldier. He wasn't even old enough to be a soldier in the, in the army at that point in time. But yet David, because of his trust in the Lord, he decided that I'm going to run out there and I'm going to face this giant. And, um, and as he, as that giant fell because that rock hit him in the forehead, David ran out. He took that Philistine sword and he cut off his head and he lifted up his head and he turned back to face the nation of Israel and he shouted a victory in the name of, of the Lord, his God. And can you imagine the type of faith and courage that filled the nation of Israel at that moment? They began to shout a war cry and they began to grab their swords and they began to take off across those battle lines to face their enemy. And the enemy ran in fear because they knew that the God of the nation of Israel had defeated Goliath. And I just love this because David wasn't a valiant hero at this moment. David wasn't a, 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 a valiant soldier who was skilled at that moment. But what David had, he had a heart after God. He had a heart that learned to trust God. He had a heart that learned how to, he didn't have eyes to see as in the natural, but he was having eyes to see with spiritual eyes as to what God could do. And I just want to encourage you, just as David filled the nation of Israel with great hope and courage because of the victory he got, because he learned to trust God with wherever you're at in this season, whether it's a challenging season, whether, whether um, whatever sort of season you're being faced with, 
I want to encourage you to run to the Lord. I want to encourage you to have eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see the kingdom of God, how God is at work, how the Lord wants to use you to fill the hearts of those around you and your family, your neighbors, your brothers and sisters in Christ with hope, with courage, just as David did as he trusted the Lord. And I believe that as you learn to walk closely with the Lord in these days, God will give you eyes to see and insight as to how he is moving and what he is up to so that you can be a great source of encouragement to those around you. Well, I hope that this encouraged you. Let me pray for you as you go about your week this week. Father, we love you and we thank you for your power and your presence in our life. And we're thankful, Lord, that you are always at work bringing about your plans and your purposes we're grateful that you're bringing about your plan and your purpose in each of our hearts and in our lives, in our families' lives, and that there's nothing that surprises you. But Lord, what you are interested in is us leaning hard into you, about us abiding in you, trusting in you, and that we might be able to be a great source of courage and strength to our brothers and sisters around us, of the hope that lies within us of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us eyes to see with spiritual eyes so that we can see how you are at work and so that we can be faithful to build your kingdom in our generation. Lord, we love you. We're thankful for your work in us. Lord, bless us as we go forth this week. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.